If you have ever played D&D, you probably know just how disliked the grappling rules are in that game. At least in the third edition, I cannot really speak about other editions. Whenever grappling came up, I used to go, oh no, grappling. But in GURPS, whenever grappling comes up, I go, oh yes, let's wrestle. In this video, I want to introduce you to the grappling systems in GURPS. Yes, systems, there are four of them, and every single one of them is good. I will not provide any in-depth commentary, because this topic is way too broad and deep to cover in a single video. I will just give a general overview. Let's start with the grappling system that is presented in the GURPS basic set. GURPS has three grappling skills – Judo, Sumo Wrestling and Wrestling. In some cases, other skills can act as grappling skills, such as unarmed skills, karate, brawling and boxing, and weapon skills, but this is outside of the scope of this video. Judo is a hard difficulty skill that covers throws and grapples. Judo is a great defensive skill. You get two parries against two different attacks. You do not get the usual minus three for parrying a weapon barehanded, and you get an improved plus 3 bonus to parry when retreating. However, it is penalized for encumbrance. Basically, this is the fencing grappling skill. If you parry with judo, you can attempt to throw the attacker. If you succeed, your enemy will be knocked prone and possibly stunned and damaged. This is huge in combat, as it often opens up the enemy for a finishing blow. Judo skill can be used in place of, of dexterity, for any close combat dexterity roll except drawing a weapon or dropping a shield. Sumo wrestling is an average difficulty skill. It represents any training at grabbing, shoving and tripping. In my opinion, it is an underutilized skill. Sumo wrestling can be used in place of dexterity when you make a slam, shove or make a or resist a takedown. High levels of sumo wrestling also improve your effective strength for the purpose of making or resisting grapples and takedowns and breaking free, and gives you a good bonus to damage when you slam or shove. Unlike judo, sumo wrestling only gives you one parry. It takes a minus two penalty to against kicks and a minus three penalty against weapons. Wrestling is an average difficulty skill that represents training at grappling and pinning. High levels of wrestling improve your effective strength for the purpose of making or resisting any choke, grapple, neck snap, takedown or pin, and whenever you attempt to break free. You only get one parry, it is at minus 3 against weapons. As you can see, these three skills are quite different, as they facilitate different styles of close combat. It might be hard at first to keep all the differences in mind, but page 45 of How to be a GURPS GM has a useful comparative table. I will show it on the screen in a slightly altered form, without the striking unarmed skills. Generally speaking, you really want to have some points in at least one of these skills, because grappling often comes up in low-tech combat. Consider Judo if you want to capitalize on your mobility and want to stun and throw enemies. Sumo Wrestling is your plan to push enemies around, even if you're not fighting unarmed. And Wrestling if you're interested in locks, wrenches and pins. If you get grappled and you have no grappling skill, then you will have to rely on just your strength or dexterity alone, and that's not very good. So, how complex are the basic grappling rules? Not very. The entire grappling system takes up at less than two pages. Your initial grab is an attack roll, but most of the other actions are resolved as a quick contest of your grappling skill versus the victim's strength, dexterity, health or grappling skill, depending on the action in question. You can attack, perform a takedown, pin, choke, strangle, lock or wrench a limb, or snap the neck, and perform the other actions. This system is relatively simple and intuitive, and even if you forget something, it's only two pages long, so it won't take long to look something up. 
However, there are many edge cases that are not present in the GURPS basic set. GURPS martial arts greatly expands the number of options and clarifies many mechanics, so I consider it an essential volume if you want to grapple. With GURPS martial arts, grappling becomes super fun. Who am I kidding? I think it's an essential book in any situation that makes any combat super fun. The next system is described in GURPS Martial Arts Technical Grappling. It also receives some support in Pyramid. This one has a reputation of being extremely detailed and complex, and it's partially true. It really is very detailed, but it really is not as complex as it might seem at first. I believe that the book could benefit greatly from a better presentation and formatting. I complained about it in my review of Shields Up. Some concepts are introduced before they are explained. When you finish reading a chapter, you do not really understand what you have just read, because it is based on something you haven't read yet. To understand how technical grappling works, you will probably have to read it from start to finish multiple times. And hopefully you will also understand that it's not as complex as it seems. The main difference between the basic grappling and technical grappling is that being grappled stops being a boolean variable. Now you do not just grapple, but you also know how hard you have grappled the other person. This is measured in control points that are rolled like damage. Passively, control points penalize dexterity and strength, and they can be spent actively by the attacker to give himself a bonus to certain rolls, to penalize defenses and other rolls of the opponents, or to injure him. Honestly, the worst thing about technical grappling is the need to recalculate damage due to control points reducing strength. This can be a bookkeeping chore. Also, there is such concept as referred control. Basically, if you have accumulated control points on one of the body parts, you also grapple the adjacent body parts to a lesser degree. These rules can be difficult to wrap your head around. The book also has some rules that can be applied in games that do not use technical grappling, so that's a nice bonus. Overall, this is a very detailed system that can be difficult to understand, but probably once you have played with it a bit, it will come naturally to you. Strength tracking sucks though. You probably know by now that I believe that detailed rules do not detract from the fun, but make the game more visceral and satisfying. To me, a technical grappling trick, accomplished by accumulating control points on the opponent's hand and then spending some of them to pull the opponent's torso onto your knife, feels much more satisfying than just treating it as an attack and the description as just something you or the GM made up on the spot, but to each their own. The next system was written by the same author, Douglas Cole. First, it appeared in the Hall of Judgment book for DFRPG, but then it was printed separately in Fantastic Dungeon Grappling. Colloquially, it is known as FDG. Imagine all 50 pages of technical grappling streamlined down to 4 pages. That's what FDG is. It uses the same concept of measuring the degree of being grappled in control points, but removes things like referred control and strength reduction. Now control points only reduce dexterity, which massively reduces bookkeeping and speeds up the resolution. The book also introduces new concepts, such as weapon or shield binds, a limited form of grapple, but they integrate seamlessly into the system. Also, this is the only place in GURPS where you can find rules for swallowing opponents whole, even though the giant monsters that do that are a staple of fantasy games. I have tried this system, and it is great even if you are not playing DFRPG. It flows better than technical grappling, but uses the same concepts. My only complaint is tied to my mental inertia. I'm used to the variety of grappling techniques in GURPS martial arts, and it is sad to see them being reduced to specific applications of control points. Deep in my heart, 
I understand that this is just a matter of perception and that I'm being a grognard. At first it might feel that you have fewer options, but you really don't. I will link a blog post in the description that describes how every technique can be represented in FDG. Just as an add-on, I will link some other FDG-related blog posts that suggest some rule tweaks or explain design choices. So if you feel intimidated by technical grappling and want something different, I highly recommend trying this one out. Finally, there is the fourth grappling system that can be found in Pyramid 334, a new take on grappling by Ken Clary. I usually refer to it as NTOG. The main goal of this new grappling system is to add consistency and flexibility. In the basic grappling system there are many different resolution mechanics, but in NTOG everything is resolved with a unified grappling contest. In NTOG the grappling skills are reworked, judo becomes the ultimate grappling skill, and sumo wrestling and wrestling become subsets of judo, something close to optional specialties. Also, unlike uh, in the basic grappling system, all Ento grapplers add their strength and size to the grappling contests, because every grappling move depends not only on dexterity and skill, but also on strength and size. In some cases, strength is replaced by HP. Grappling now does not impose a penalty to dexterity, but allows the grappler to affect the grapplee actively. For example, if the grappled victim tries to make an attack, you can roll a grappling contest to prevent him from doing so. This fixes the somewhat clunky rules for treating weak grapplers as extra encumbrance. He just won't be able to stop the strong opponent. Almost all techniques and grappling concepts introduced in GURPS martial arts are represented in this system. The entire system takes up only 8 pages. So, in conclusion. The basic grappling system is actually very detailed and still relatively simple and intuitive. I played with it since the start, and I rarely had any problems with it. Grappling is fun, engaging and detailed. Technical grappling is a bookkeeping heavy, very detailed system that might require a lot of time to develop the Stockholm Syndrome. Fantastic Dungeon Grappling is a very streamlined, fast version of technical grappling that in my opinion has a lot of potential. I have played with all these three systems, but the fourth one, a new take on grappling, was not played. However, on paper it looks great, and I really want to give it a shot. I have heard many people praise it, but I have also heard people say that it tries to fix problems that do not really exist. Maybe I'll run a combat example using it, and maybe other grappling systems as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.